In this fifth tutorial, we'll be finally taking a look at how to create and modify animations for the MP system V3. Now, we'll add bones for each movable part and skin it to the weapon inside Blender to make the weapon fully functionable. To make things easier select the bone, go to Viewport Settings, expand Viewport Display and check in front. To visualize the bone better we can increase its size by selecting the tip of it and moving it along the axis. Duplicate the bone for each part of the weapon you want to animate. In this case, we'll have a magazine bone, a fire mode bone, a trigger bone, a release bone and two bones for the charging handle. Align them as best as possible so that the base of the bone is exactly at the center of the rotating parts. Now delete the root bone, as the armature itself acts as the root. Name the bones accordingly. Next, we'll need to make the charging handle turn bone the child of the charging handle bone. To do that, select the charging handle turn bone first and then control plus click the charging handle bone. Press P to parent it with keep offsets. This completes the bone setup. Now we need to adjust the weight painting for the weapon. Thankfully, with weapons being rigid bodies, this process is straightforward. Simply select the weapon and then the bones, control plus click and press P to parent with empty groups. The previously created bone vertex group can be renamed to weapon. Select the Weapon Vertex group and clear all vertices from that group in case it had any. Next, select the part of the mesh that needs to follow the desired bone and assign the selected vertices to the bone group by clicking Assign. Make sure that no undesired vertices are part of that group. Then select the vertices of all the other groups as shown, invert the selection and apply the inverted selection to the Weapon Vertex group. Check if everything moves as desired in the Pose mode of the armature. Lastly, this mesh needs some adjustments, because the magazine is incomplete and the side picture is a bit too small for our purposes. Select all vertices of the magazine mesh and delete them. Add a new magazine to the scene, like the PMAG by Faringar. Once it's in position, make it part of the mesh by joining them together. Apply a different material group for the magazine and make sure that the UVs translate it correctly. Lastly, apply the vertices of the new mesh to the magazine vertex group. For the rear side, we simply want to increase the size of the hollow ring to make aiming easier. Make sure that no vertices are overlapping. Now the model can be exported. Inside Unreal, simply re-import the mesh. So far, we've managed to make most existing animations work with the new weapon by using MPS's toolset. Now, we'll take this a step further with Control Rig and Unreal Sequencer to edit complex animations. Create a new level. Find CR underscore MPS in the content browser and place it into the level. The sequencer should automatically open and the left tab will go into animation mode. This toolbar allows toggling the visibility of the control shapes and more importantly, you can constrain things. The sequencer below is where we'll spend most of our time. The outliner allows you to select individual controls, add animations and transforms. The timeline itself can be edited with keys to create animations. It also comes with a handy graph editor. For now, delete CR underscore MPS and transforms. On the right hand side, two windows have opened as well the Anim Outliner and the Anim Details below. Both can be closed, as the Outliner and Details pane are more important. To complete the setup, add a normal camera actor to the level and attach it to camera underscore FP of CR underscore MPS in the Outliner. Zero the transforms and rotate the camera minus 90 degrees on the X axis and plus 90 degrees on the Z axis. Then add the skeletal mesh weapon from the content browser and attach it to the weapon bone of CR underscore MPS via the Outliner. 
For the weapon, zero location and rotation. Save the level. Right click on the animation layer in the sequencer and select SMG underscore first draw. Make sure it plays correctly and edit the timeline to end when the animation ends. Move the timer to zero, right click on CR underscore MPS and select bake to control rig with CR underscore MPS control rig. This converts the animation into a keyframed one of the control rig, which gives us access over the animation so we can edit it. The sequencer allows for a non-destructive workflow. Right click the new CR underscore MPS subsection and select add selection additive. This is the track we mostly want to modify. Select the left hand control in the viewport. The sequencer will automatically select its track. To reduce visual clutter, you can select the three bars and select selected control rig controls. To get started, you want to first define save points of the animation, basically points, which don't need any or just little adjustments, because the additive layer will otherwise apply its changes throughout the timeline. Do this by pressing enter in the timeline. Once the framework has been established, we can finally get to the poses that need editing. Simply move to the desired frame in the timeline and then move and rotate the left hand control to the desired transform. The timeline should automatically apply keys, in case it doesn't, press enter or the little plus icon to the left to apply the transforms. This entire part is a trial and error process, so take your time and don't be afraid to undo some of your changes. Save frequently though, as Unreal likes to crash. Always make sure to check your result in the first person view. We aren't limited to the additive track. As you can see, the bass track has many keys for the left hand. Between 20 to 45, I've opted to delete the existing keys to gain more control over the hand movement. Lastly, edit the left hand's final position to best match the idle animation. Note, you may encounter this error, that after saving the animation sequence, it gets broken. All you need to do to fix this is reapply the meshes. Simply right-click on the red icon on the sequencer, select Assign Actor and just select the according actor for the mesh, the weapon, and the camera. This is a one-time error and shouldn't trouble you after the first time. Once we've completed the animation, go to the beginning of the timeline, select the base layer CR underscore MPS and right-click it. Select Bake Animation Sequence. Pick your desired location and choose a name. In the options pop-up, you can leave everything to the default or deselect everything except export transforms. Currently, at least for my system, this is quite buggy and might cause freezes. Once successfully exported, a new animation file gets created. Locate the file in the content browser, right-click it, select Asset Actions and Export. Right-click the animation again and select Re-import from new source, select your newly created file. This step is necessary, otherwise the animation is completely broken at runtime. Create an animation montage from the new animation and open it. Search for the SMG First Draw Animation Montage in the Asset Browser and copy its notifies over to our new montage. Adjust their timing if needed. Go to the data table DT underscore MPS underscore Anims and replace the First Draw Montage for the HK with the new montage. Now it's time to create the weapon animations and this is why the complex skeleton was created in the first part of the tutorial. Right click the mesh in the timeline and select edit with FK control rig. This creates a new control rig for the weapon automatically and adds it to the sequencer. Remove all the keys that are created since they don't carry any value.
During the draw animation, the fire mode selector is turned and the charging handle gets pulled. Create keys and move slash rotate the bones is shown. You'll see that there is a mismatch between the hand and the charging handle. Thankfully, the animation we created before is non-destructive. So we can simply update the hand position and the additive layer just as before. Once everything syncs up nicely, we can export both, the character mesh and the weapon mesh animation. Once again, export the new animations and re-import them with new source. Create a montage for the weapon first draw as well. Once again, we can borrow notifies from the SMG. Adjust the timing, optionally, exchange the audio notifies. Lastly, add the HK weapon first draw animation to the weapon data table. The previous tutorial used offsets to place the left and right hand, which carries over at runtime. However, the newly created animation doesn't account for that so especially the left hand will glitch up. To fix this, move the left hand down by the same number of units it got offset in the data table in the last frame. Re-export the animation. Note that this is only necessary if you have edited the offsets. Alternatively, you could also go over the base animations, such as idle, walk, etc., in the sequencer and adjust the offsets there. Then export them as new animations, zero the offsets and everything is clean. In the next tutorial, we'll be using marketplace animations to introduce completely new anims to the system. For this, we'll use the build-in retargeter and fine-tune the anims with the sequencer to achieve great results.